Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the QSP Parrot in D2 and Micarta. Let me start this off by saying, this is a 26 to $28 knife. I will link it right down in the description if you'd like to check it out, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There is a link for Patreon right down below as well. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of the QSP Parrot. Coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. Blade length is coming in at just shy of three and a quarter. Cutting edge is coming in at just a hair over three inches. How about a couple of size comparisons? No reason to do everything here, but the Ontario Rat Model 1, and I think honestly the Ontario Rat Model 2 is a perfect size comparison because it's very, very similar in overall size to the Rat 2. Um, let's go ahead and do just some smaller ones. How about the Spyderco Para 3? There you go. How about the Benchmade Bug Outs? Very similar to the Bug Out, just a little bit shorter. And last but not least, I think it'd be a good idea to put it up against the QSB Penguin. Now mine's in titanium, but that's the, you know, it's the same length as the standard one in uh, my Carta. So there you go. Let's go ahead and do carry profiles. So thickness. Sorry, putting everything away. Up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it is a little bit thicker for some reason. It's kind of excessively, I don't want to say excessively thick. Um, I think it's probably about the same or a little thicker than the uh, standard QSP Penguin. Uh, I don't know why they decided to go with that thickness of scale here, but it's not really that big of a deal. The rest of the uh, carry dimensions are actually very good. Up against the PM2 and Para 3 for length and height, we have a knife that is shorter than both. Uh, in terms of length and shorter than both in terms of height. So probably won't be that big of a deal. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. We are looking at, by the way, D2 steel, micarta, and steel liners. There's no milling on the inside. Oh no, that's gonna add excess weight. Actually, the thing ends up being pretty light. Yeah, 2.86 ounces. So ratios, people, be pretty happy with this guy. If you wear super duper tight pants or athletic shorts, this might not feel like the most comfortable thing in the whole world, but for the vast majority of people, at least people who can legally carry it, you're probably gonna have a good carry experience with this guy. Let's go ahead and um, do a measurement of blade stock thickness here. I think this is somewhere around 115 thousandths. Yeah, almost exactly, uh, 115 thousandths or so. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Now I've already been inside this and I'll explain why here in just a little bit. Uh, get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description where I talk about my tools. Very handy stuff when the little slider thing doesn't come out of there. The pivot is going to be a T8. As you saw, I think you guys probably saw me put the T8 bit in there. I'm not going to check these. These are T6, 100%. A couple of pocket clip screws, some scale screws, two on each side. Minimal hardware, so that's good. Uh, I wish it was... T8 or bigger, but you can't always get what you want. As long as you've got a place to put your hardware and some quality tools, you'll be in good shape. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes of this review. It's pretty straightforward, guys. This is a thumb stud opener running on phosphor bronze. And the reason I checked in there is to see if the if there was a uh, little nylon washer sandwiched between one of the washers and the blade face, and there is. That is the case with, if you didn't know, the Ontario Rat 1 and 2 are like that. Whoops. Uh, the standard QSP Penguin um, that runs on washers, the titanium ones run on bearings. The standard versions of these also, as far as I know, have a little Teflon washer. Why? It, it helps a little bit with the action, right? Don't be afraid of that. It's still going to keep debris out of the pivot. And honestly, there's almost no way for that little washer to get damaged during normal use. Um, I mean, technically it's possible, but it's much more likely if you're going to damage it, it would be while you're taking it apart, but even then it's pretty easy, right? It really just doesn't bother me. I think this is a good setup. It's nice and solid, nice and snappy, and you get that nice action. It's not false shut, but it's definitely like a wiggle shut, which is really cool considering it's running on washers. I'm honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. 
So access to the thumb stud is good and you can do your little, and I'm sorry, I, my, I know my finger's gross, I smashed it here recently. Um, you can do your thumb stud uh, deployments, you can do the um, you know sort of reverse flick deployment, it's fine. Access to that liner lock, they did cut it out just a little bit, but it really just needed to be a hair deeper. I'm still kind of having to pinch it, like squish my finger in there and move it over, kind of approach it more from the top than from the side. I wish that they had cut that just a tiny little bit more, but that's pretty, that's a little nitpicky considering what I'm paying for this knife. Um, and honestly, the ergonomics are very, very good. Uh, it's not a hand melting experience, but it's comfortable. You can get a full four finger grip on this guy. I'm gonna call this about a medium sized knife, right? So I can still get my pinky in there. If your hands are like mine and you wear an XL glove or smaller, you're gonna have um, a, a good full purchase on a knife like this. Jimping's in the right place, so that's good. Edges, the micarta, nicely chamfered down, no issue there. Uh, you can actually mount the pocket clip on the left side for left-handed carry, so that's really, really nice. Um, QSP does a great job, not only with pricing and materials, but fit and finish. Oftentimes, when you see knives in this territory where it's lacking, if they're kind of keeping up with the trends of the materials that we like, in this case, micarta and D2. Wow, yeah, it's everywhere, right? That's what the trend is right now. And they're good materials, I'm not saying they're not, right? But they kept up with that. But oftentimes where you see companies lacking or slacking, is what I should say, um, is fit and finish. And uh, that is not the case here. Everything is really, really nice. Now, these are made in China. Uh, they're not made in Taiwan and definitely not made in the United States. Um, but uh, yeah, the quality, QSP's quality is really, really good. And they're hard to beat, you know, with their competitors being CVV, CGRB, uh, Kubi and a handful of other, you know, companies are coming. But QSP really has, in my experience, the best ratio as far as like a well-known company. I understand there's a lot of like micro, micro brands um, that are making good quality knives, right? Their, their whole lineup is like two or three knives, right? But as far as like better known or semi better known companies that have an incredible ratio between uh, cost and um, uh, fit and finish, QSP is really on top of it. On top of that, this is a straightforward, I mean, they're not, obviously they're not reinventing the wheel. Very straightforward design, but a nice, comfortable, it just makes sense. It's not trying to be anything flashy. It's not trying to be anything super duper this or that. It's just straightforward knife and it works. Uh, the thumb stud is a good shape. It's big enough where it's not pointy, but it's small enough that it's not some big honking thing that's like overly aggressive. Curiously though, the prongs, the tips of the stud stick out ever so slightly further than the scales. I don't know why. Uh, just, it's kind of hard to see here because of the, the angle, but there we go. You can see. I don't know why. I think they should be flush with the scales, but not that big of a deal. Um, the corners up here, a little bit sharp. Oh, that makes me cringe. I want these knocked down, but really what I want more than that is not a satin finish. What I want is a tumbled finish. I know that QSP can do it because they do it on their um, their uh, Penguin here. Uh, it, it really looks nice. The And sorry, my fingerprints are all over this, but this looks nice and all the corners are nicely knocked down, even when they're, where they would normally be sharp, like up here, nice and knocked down. Why is that important? I don't know, it's not really that important, right? I mean, I just don't like feeling it. It just feels a little bit better to me. It feels a little bit more finished, right? And for those of you who are striking ferro rods off of your pocket knives, and I know some people do that, well, it's actually gonna benefit you. I'm just really sick of satin finishes. <clears throat> but anyways, this is a fully flat ground blade that drops to a nice, reasonably thin edge. It's not a laser beam, but it is plenty sharp, and it will tackle your general EDC tasks with ease. Unlike the um, Penguin, uh, the Pelican actually has, well, you know, people always get mad at me when I say that this doesn't have a tip. It does have a tip, it's just dropped down here. This has more of a classic drop point tip. So puncture tasks, which I don't find as common as slicing or like, like my day to day has more like draw cuts and slicing than poking, right? But for those of you who do a lot more pokey tasks, well, there you go, you've got a tip. The edge looks good. Uh, it's a nice clean edge. It doesn't feel toothy. It doesn't feel, you know, I don't, it doesn't feel like it's partially rolled or unfinished as is the case with a lot of knives. Once you get under $30 in the knife world, they, it's like most companies stop caring about the edge. That's, that's the truth, right? Especially that junker stuff uh, that you find at gas stations for $19.95 or $24.95, right? 
those it's like did they they barely have an edge on them at all right so it's it's really nice not only to get a sharp edge but a nice consistent clean final bevel uh it looks good i mean that is uh about as you know as happy as i i i can imagine being uh, with a 28 or 26 to, to $28 knife. So really, really good. Uh, moving on here, we have a little bit of a lanyard slot thing for lanyard people. We've got a couple of barrel spacers back here. Flipping it over, we have a very generic um, kind of stamped out steel pocket clip, which is fine. It's perfectly acceptable on a knife of this price range. Uh, it'll hold. Uh, I wish that it was milled into the scale, but again, I don't want to be too picky considering what this knife costs. It does just fine. I kind of wish that it was a little bit shorter, um, but it's not so okay. You don't feel it too much, honestly, um, but uh, you, you, you've... If you're going to cut with this for 30 minutes at a time, you're going to notice it. What I do appreciate that they did here is they dropped it down and it's got a, this swooping bill, which is nice. So this is not super duper prominent, but it's still rising enough that it should be able to rise to meet any thickness of pocket seam, allowing you to slide the knife in and out of your pants with one hand. Carry depth is not deep, but not shallow. It's right about medium. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, this knife, there's the stop pin right there. No shouldering, but it doesn't necessarily need it. No blade play at all, up, down, left, or right. Yeah, a little teeny, teeny, weeny, tiny bit of pivot lash, but I at twenty for twenty six to twenty eight bucks, I don't really care. And again, that doesn't really affect anything. What I'm saying is, is there's a little bit of extra space uh, around the pivot barrel, like where they drilled the hole in the blade to so that the pivot barrel could go through it. It's, it's a little, it's ever so slightly too big. So you can feel a little bit, some clicking, but that's not gonna affect its performance. It's really something that I um, use to kind of uh, decide how well something was machined and it makes a lot more sense to do that on, or how accurately something was machined. It makes more sense to do that on a knife that's substantially more expensive than this. So I don't know that I really care. Detent is good. Um, Eh, there might be a little, there's a little tiny, teeny tiny bit of detent play, nothing too serious, and you can easily snap this blade out, and because of the nature, I mean, this is a knife that's smaller, the detent's heavy enough, right, it's not, the blade is not going to whip out of, of the knife, right, so trying to calibrate here um, with my review process. The uh, blade is centered, um, but I did, well, so... I took this apart and then put it back together and then centered it. But whenever you're working with a, because I'm sure you're looking at this and go, that is not centered. It's actually slightly off to the right. Whenever you're working with a washer, uh, PB washer and nylon washer setup, there's a little bit of um, play where you can actually push it. <laughs> you can see right there. What I did is I pushed it and it. what it did is it fell back to a position that is centered, right? So there's a little bit of mushiness that's going to make it do that. But this, these can easily be adjusted. The centering trick that I do that I've got that video on, it works really well with stuff like this because there's a little bit of room to where it can kind of, there's like a range where the tip is more or less centered. It's fine. Not a big deal. The rat and the penguin are exactly the same way. So the Pelican, overall, this is a pretty easy review. This is not going to, you know... Like, this isn't going to light a fire under anybody. There's nothing ultra special going on here. Other than the fact that this is a super duper utilitarian design, straightforward, just a nice EDC knife with good materials for the money. 26 to 28 bucks is a no-brainer. When there are companies building exactly this and charging 40 or $50 for it literally everywhere, you throw a rock in any direction on the internet here in the knife world, yeah, you, you, other companies are charging 40, 50 bucks for something like this. So um, this is great. I wish the scales were a little bit thinner, um, just a little bit. Everything else, I mean, it doesn't, it's like the more that I command, they change and it sounds silly, like, like they're waiting and listening. They're not. Um, the more changes that I would say, oh, I wish they'd change this, it would just be more expensive. So I, I get it. I wish the scales were just a little bit thinner, but outside of that and maybe a deeper cut for the liner lock, this is essentially a perfect little budget knife. Um, this is extremely recommendable. I'm going to put it in my recommended knives playlist as well as my budget knives or my cheap knives I like playlist. Uh, very, very good. Nothing incredibly special, but very, very good for the money from QSP. Um, you know, really 
I'm not super duper surprised. If you've not heard of QSP, check out their stuff. They have great prices and they offer a lot of really great designs. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.